Hello, my name is Matt Cornock, and in this video, we'll be looking at the way that we can use tablets in teaching sessions. So first of all, let's think about the standard lecture situation. You're standing at the front and you're delivering your content to your students, but you want a little bit more interaction. You want a little bit more collaboration. And so you split your students down into groups and you get them to work together, maybe solving a problem. But how do you actually know what they're getting up to and how do you help them focus their attention? Well, one way would be to give them tablets and tablets offer a means to provide content to them that they might not always already have. So they they could, for example, be looking at websites or journal articles, and you can also use them as a way of getting them to provide a content to you. So, for example, if they're using collaborative documents, you could then go to your lectern PC and look at the documents as they're being written and provide feedback on those documents in a live situation within the lecture. But then, you know, you can also facilitate conversations and discussions with students based on the resources or the activities they devise using the tablets. And that conversation, those feedbacks within the groups could be fed back to you as the lecturer and then discussed amongst the whole class at the end of the session. But any activity that involves tablets needs to have three key things. First of all, you need to focus the attention of the students. The tablets themselves could act as a distracting element. They could be a novelty item. Therefore, you need to focus attention as to why you're using the tablets. And you do that by identifying a clear objective, a clear learning objective, the purpose of the activity. Finally, you need to specify really clearly the output that you're expecting from the students after that period of activity. And that could be, for example, a, a, a collaborative document that you then review. It could be a discussion and then you want to get them to feed back from the discussion. It could be um, a, a, an artifact such as a photo that you want them to take based on the work that they've done together. So let's have a look at some of the different types of activities. In these three columns, we're looking at the basic learning activity. In the middle column, we'll be looking at the learning objectives. And the last column is the tool or the process that will help you achieve that learning objective. So there are different types of activities you can use with Tablet. The first one, a very simple process, read a short article. Here you'd say identify the key points or analyze an argument or contrast the opposing views presented within an article. And therefore, using the tablets, they could find an article using web searches, or they could open readings that you've preloaded onto the device. Analyzing a data set is another type of activity. This, you can use the tablets here to identify trends and interpret data. And because you're doing this within a classroom environment, you have more of a dialogue about understanding what these trends and interpretations might be. You can use visualization apps via websites to access and present data. Tablets can also be used to help discuss a topic. In particular, they can be used to capture the ideas amongst the students or collecting questions um, that the students might want to pose to you. It can also be a way to help students explain an issue. So, for example, as a result of the activity, students would then have to report back on what they uh, view as a collective um, on a particular issue. So they can make notes using post-it note apps or using Google Docs to make more fuller notes. And finally, you can practice a skill using tablets. And this relates to demonstrating a process or recording experiences. And therefore, you can create content in Google Docs or with the camera built into tablets. So it might be, for example, recording a short uh, role playing situation, or it might be um, a, using big bits of paper and creating a mind map and then taking a, a picture of that and uploading that to a shareable space. So tablets um, tend to have a lot of software on them. Um, I've taken this screenshot here of my Samsung tab and I've removed some of the default applications that appear at the top which are just trying to sell you stuff. And from the Play Store, which is the app store for this particular tablet, I've downloaded additional software. But there are some things that are already built in. So first of all, the camera is already part of the uh, tablet system. There's an internet browser and there's a maps tool already built into this particular tablet because it's a Google Android tablet. YouTube is another um, facility you might want to install if it isn't already. I think most of them do have that now. Google Drive, that uh, comes with Sheets and Docs as well now, uh, is a useful app to pre-install onto your device along with Quick Office and Adobe Reader. 
And finally, you probably want to install File Manager, an app that helps you manage the files on the system in a more useful way than the default uh, file managing tools that are available. So these apps here are the ones that we'll be looking at through the rest of the videos. To summarize then, tablets enable accessing and interacting with resources and it also allows students to contribute and collaborate.